I'm a total Sonic the Hedgehog fan, much like everyone else. I like the newer games, but I don't mind playing the classics. I don't think I've ever played glitchy or hacked games before. Though, I don't think I want to play any after the experience I had. It started on a nice summer afternoon. I was playing Sonic Unleashed. I liked how you get to explore the towns in it, until I noticed, out of my peripheral vision, that the mailman had arrived and put something in my mailbox as usual, and left. I paused my game to go and see what I got from the mail. The only thing in the mailbox was a CD case for computers, and a note. I look inside. I looked at the note first and realized it was from my dear friend Kyle, let's just call him that, whom I hadn't heard from in two weeks. I know that because I recognized his handwriting, though what was weird was how it looked. It looked badly written and scratchy and somewhat difficult to read, as if Kyle was having a hard time writing it down and did it in a hurry. This is what he wrote. Tom. I can't take it anymore. I had to get rid of this thing somehow before it was too late, and I was hoping you'd do it for me. I can't do it. He's after me, and if you don't destroy the CD, he'll come after you too. He's too fast for me. Please, Tom, destroy this godforsaken disc before he comes for you too. It's too late for me. Destroy the disc, and you'll destroy him. But do it quick, otherwise he'll catch you. Don't even play the game. It's what he wants. Just destroy it. Please, Kyle. Well, that was certainly weird. Even though Kyle is my best friend and I haven't seen him in two weeks, I didn't do what he asked me. I didn't think that a simple gaming disc would do anything bad to him. After all, it's just a game, right? Boy, was I wrong about that. Anyway, I looked at the disc, and it looks like any ordinary computer CDR disc, except it had black marker on it written Sonic.exe, and it was much unlike Kyle's handwriting, meaning that he must have gotten it from someone else, like a pawn shop or eBay. When I saw Sonic on the writing of the big CD, I was actually excited and wanted to play it, since I'm a BIG Sonic fan. I went up to my room and turned on my computer and put the disc in and installed the game. When the title screen popped up, I noticed that it was like the first Sonic game. I was like, awesome, because like I said earlier, I liked the classics. The first thing I noticed that was out of place was when I pressed start, there was a split second when I saw the title image turn into something much different, something that I now consider horrifying, before cutting to black. I remember what the image looked like in that split second before the game cut to black. The sky had darkened, the title emblem was rusted and ruined, the Sega 1991 was now instead Sega 666, and the water had turned red, like blood, except it looked hyper-realistic. But the freakiest thing was that in the split second frame was Sonic, his eyes were pitch black and bleeding with two glowing red dots staring right at me and his smile had stretched wider up to the edge of his face. I was rather disturbed about that image when I saw it, though I figured that it was just a glitch and forgot about it. After it cut to black, it stayed like that for about 10 seconds or so. And then another weird thing happened. The save file select from Sonic the Hedgehog 3 popped up, and I was like, what the fuck? What's this doing in the first Sonic game? Anyway, then I noticed something was off. The background was the dark cloudy sky of the bad Stardust Speedway level from Sonic CD, and there was only three save files. The music was that creepy Caverns of Winter music from Earthbound, only it was extended and seemed to have been in reverse. And the image of the save file where you can preview of the level you're on is just red static for all three files. What freaked me out more was the character select. It showed only Tails, Knuckles, and to my surprise, Dr. Robotnik. Now I was sure that something was up. I mean, how could you play as Robotnik in a classic Sonic game for crying out loud? That's when I realized this wasn't a glitchy game. It was a hacked game. Yeah, it definitely looked hacked. It was really creepy. 
But as a smart gamer... <laughs> as a smart gamer, just fuck off. I wasn't scared, or at least I tried not to be. I told myself that it was just a hacked game and there was nothing wrong with that. Anyways, shaking off the creeped out feeling I got, I picked file 1 and chose Tails, and when I selected and got started, the game froze for about 5 seconds and I heard a creepy pixelated laugh that sounded an awful lot like that Kefka guy from Final Fantasy before cutting to black. The screen stayed black for about 10 seconds or more, then it showed the typical level title thing, except the more simplistic shapes were different shades of red and the text only showed Hill, Act 1. The screen faded and the level title vanished, revealing tales in the green hill zone from Sonic 1. The music was different though, it sounded like a peaceful melody, in reverse. Anyway, I started playing and had Tails start running like you would in any classic Sonic game. What was odd was that as Tails was running along the level, there was nothing but flat ground and a few trees for 5 minutes. That was when the peaceful music started to lower down to the sleep, to the slow, deep tones very slowly as I kept going. I suddenly saw something and I stopped to see what it was. It was one of those small animals lying dead on the ground bleeding. That was when the music started to slow down. Tails had a shocked and saddened look on his face that I have never seen on him before. So I had him move along, and he kept that worried look on his face. As he kept moving, I saw more dead animals as Tails moved past them, looking more and more worried as the music lowers and then he moves past the more dead animals. I was rather shocked to see how they all died. They looked like somebody killed them rather than gruesome ways. A squirrel was hanged on a tree for what appeared to be his entrails hanging out. A bunny had all four of his limbs torn off and had a duck that had his eye gouged out and his throat slit. I felt sick to my stomach when I saw the massacre, and apparently so did Tails. After a few more seconds, there was no more animals and the music seemed to have stopped. I still kept Tails to continue. After a minute passed after the music stopped, Tails was running up the hill and then he stopped. It wasn't until I saw why. Sonic was there on the other side of the screen with his back turned against Tails with his eyes closed. Tails looked happy to see Sonic, but then his smile faltered, obviously noticing that Tails, obviously noticing that Sonic wasn't responding to him, if not acting as if he was totally oblivious of Tails' presence. Tails walked slowly towards Sonic, and I noticed that I wasn't even moving my keyboard to make him move, so this had to have been a cutscene. Suddenly, I began to have a growing feel of dread as Tails walked closer to Sonic to get his attention. I felt that Tails was in danger, and something bad was going to happen. I heard faint static growing louder as Tails was but inches away from Sonic, and stuck his hand out to touch him. That foreboding feeling in my gut was growing stronger, and I felt the urge to tell Tails to get away from Sonic as the static grew louder. Suddenly, in a split second, I saw Sonic's eyes open, and they were black with those red glowing dots, just like that title image. Though there wasn't a smile. When that happened, the screen turned black and the static sound was off. It stayed black for about 7 seconds and then white text appeared forming a message saying, Hello, do you want to play with me? At this point I was creeped out, I didn't want to continue with the game, but my curiosity got the better of me when I was taken to a different level, with the level title now saying, Hide and Seek. This time, I was on the Angel Island level from Sonic 3 and it looked like everything was on fire. Tails looked as though he was scared out of his wits this time. He actually looked at me and made a frantic gestures to me as if he wanted to get out of this area he was in as fast as possible. I was starting to get freaked out by this. I mean, Tails was actually breaking the fourth wall, trying to get me to tell him out of there. So I pressed down on the arrow key as hard as I could and made him run as fast as he could. A pixelated version of that creepy theme when you made Shadow on the arc as Robotnik from Sonic Adventure 2 was playing, and I made Tails trek through the desolate forest, trying to help him escape from whatever was trying to run from. 
Suddenly, I heard that creepy laugh again. That awful Kafka laugh. Right after about 10 seconds have passed, I helped Tails run through the forest, and then I started seeing flashes of Sonic popping up everywhere on the screen, again with those black and red eyes. The music changed that suspenseful. The music changed that suspenseful drowning jingle as I see Sonic behind Tails slowly gaining up on him, flying. Sonic wasn't running, he was actually flying. The flying pose of his sprites made him look very similar to Metal Sonic's flying pose in Sonic CD, except it was just Sonic and he had the black and red eyes again, only this time. He had the most deranged looking grin on his face. He looked as though he was enjoying the torment he was giving the poor little fox as he gained up on him. Suddenly, when Tails tripped, another cutscene, the music stopped and Sonic vanished. Tails laid there and started crying for 15 seconds. The scene was rather upsetting to watch and I kind of teared up myself. But then Sonic appeared right in front of Tails and Tails looked up in horror. Blood started to come out of those blackened eyes as Sonic's as a grin slowly grew on his face as he looked down at the horrified fox. I could do nothing but watch. Just as a split second, Sonic lunged at Tails right before the screen went black. There was only a loud screeching noise that only lasted 5 seconds. The text returned, only this time it said, You're too slow, wanna try again? And then that god awful laugh came with it. I was so shocked by what had happened. Did Sonic murder Tails? No, he couldn't have. He and Tails are supposed to be best friends, right? Why did Sonic do that to him? I shook the shock off as I was brought back to the character select. The save file that had Tails was different. Tails was no longer in the box itself, but in the TV screen itself, which was flickering with that red static. Tails' expression scared me. His eyes were black and bleeding, his orange fur had gone black, and he had an expression of anguish on his face. Trying to ignore it, I pressed Knuckles next. The laugh came again and the screen cut to black and stayed there for another 10 seconds. This time the level said, you can't run. I was really freaked out by now. I couldn't really tell if this was a glitch or a hack or some kind of sick twisted joke. Or anything really. But despite my fear of what happens next, I kept playing. The next level looked very different. It had the ground of the scrap brain zone, but the sky background looked like the main menu. It had the dark reddish cloudy sky, but it was the music that creeped me out the most. It sounded like Gygus' theme right after you beat Pokey in Earthbound. I also noticed that Knuckles looked afraid just like Tails did, though not as much, more rather he looked a little unnerved. He broke the fourth wall just like Tails and looked as if he wasn't sure what was going on, but I made him move anyways. He ran down the straight pathway in this dark level, and as he did that, the screen started to flicker red static a couple times, and then that maddening laugh came again. <laughs> then after a few seconds of running, I noticed several blood stains on the metallic ground. I felt the growing sense of fear again, thinking something horrible was going to happen to Knuckles. He looked nauseated walking down this blood-stained road, but I still kept him going. Suddenly, as Knuckles ran, Sonic appeared right in front of him with those black and red eyes and then red static appeared again when the static vanished showing nothing but black screen with text saying, Found you. I was now scared. Sonic had found Knuckles already? What was going on? Anyway, red static came out and then I was back to the level. Knuckles looked like he was panicking and Sonic was nowhere to be found. And this time, the high-pitched squealing from Silent Hill 1's final boss was playing. Was this some kind of boss battle with Sonic? I hope to god it wasn't, honestly. Suddenly, Sonic appeared right behind Knuckles in what appeared to be pixelated black smoke. I made Knuckles turn and then punched Sonic, but Sonic vanished in black pixelated smoke again before I could even land a hit. That terrible laugh went on again. Then Sonic appeared behind Knuckles again, and then I made him punch him again, and Sonic vanished again, laughing. Knuckles was panicking even more, and I even felt like I was going crazy. Sonic was practically playing with us. He was playing a sick, twisted little mind game with me and Knuckles. He was a mind freak. <laughs> Another cut scene played as Knuckled- as Knuckled- Knuckled! As Knuckled fell to his knees and clutched his head sobbing, I felt his agony. Sonic was actually driving us both crazy.
And then a split second sonic lunge at Knuckles and the screen went black with another distorted screeching noise that lasted for at least three seconds. Another text message appeared. So many souls to play with, so little time. Wouldn't you agree? What the hell? Just what was going on? I started to think that Sonic was actually trying to talk to me through the game, but I was too scared to think that. What? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Fuck. I was brought back to the main menu, and this time the second file box had Knuckles on the TV screen. His red fur had darkened to a reddish gray. His dreadlocks were dripping with blood, and his eyes were black and bleeding too and he had the look of sadness on his face. I began to think that those actual characters trapped in the TV screens and the save files, but I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. So I shut the game off and took a break. I took a nap, wish I hadn't, cause then I began to have the most disturbing nightmare. I was in pitch black darkness, though I was under the light given off by a lamp that hung high above my head. I could hear the cries of Knuckles and Tails nearby. They were saying stuff like, help us and why did you give us to him and run away before he gets to you too their cries dried out as i heard sonic laugh his laugh it sounded a lot like the distorted kefka laugh you're a lot of fun to play with kid just like your friend kyle though he didn't last long i was scared and looking around for the source of the voice won't be long until you join him and all my other friends I saw him and walking towards me, flickering in and out of several directions. You can't run, kid. You're in my world now, just like the others. When he grabbed me and I saw his bleeding black and red-eyed grinning face, I woke up with a fright. After a couple of hours, I decided to continue playing the game. I don't know why, but I had to know. I had to figure out why this was happening. So I turned on the computer, turned on the game, and selected Robotnik next. I still thought that was picky. I still thought that was wacky, playing as Robotnik, but anyway, the level title appeared again, this time it said dot dot dot, which I found really freaky. This time, I was in some kind of hallway, didn't really look like it was from any of the classic Sonic games, though it had a pixelated style. The floor was shiny and checkered, the walls were a dark grayish purple with animated candle lights and a few dark blood stains here and there, and there was a dead and there was a dark red curtain hanging above the top part of the screen. Every 12 seconds or so, that red curtain would slay very slowly. But whenever you're playing a game, you can barely see it move. The music was oddly pleasant, a piano playing a rather sad but peaceful song. But I knew better. This was the song that played in Hill Act 1, only it wasn't in reverse. Robotnik didn't look entirely nervous like Tails and Knuckles did, but he did have a suspicious look on his face as if he was being just a bit paranoid. He did have a little animation when I was left him standing. His, he turned his head to the left and to the right at least once or twice and then shrugs at me as if he has no idea where he was or what was going on. Even though I was scared out of my mind, out of my mind, oh, okay, about that he was going to happen, I had Robotnik continue onward. He did his usual running animation, you know, when you've beaten him at the end of a classic Sonic game and you chase him, as we continue going through the hallway. Then I stop at a long flight of flares. Then I stop at a long flight of stairs leading downward. Now I was nervous. Even Robotnik seemed unsure of himself, though I pressed onwards. As I led Robotnik down the stairs, I noticed that the walls had gotten darker and more reddish. The red torches are now an eerie blue. Then we landed onto another hallway. This one was longer than the last one, or at least it felt like it. And then we headed down another flight of stairs down. This one was much longer, took at least one full minute. And then I heard that horrid Kefka laugh again, and the music slowly faded until it was quiet. As it did, the walls turned more dark red, and the torches were black flames now. When Robotnik landed into the third hallway, I noticed he now looked really creeped out. Though he tried to hide it, I couldn't blame him. I was scared too. Suddenly, Sonic popped up right in front of Robotnik the same way he did Knuckles, and then the red static. The red static lasted for about 15 seconds, then it showed me a most unpleasant image. 
The image showed a hyper-realistic Vistonic standing in the darkness where you can only see his face while his head and torso faded into the black, and when I actually saw, I say hyper-realistic. I mean, he looked so real you could actually see the lines in his blue fur, as if you could actually feel the fur if he touched the screen. His face. Oh god, he had the most horrifying smile I had ever seen. And that's saying something considering I saw the images at the start of the game. His eyes were wide and black and once again crying blood, which also looked hyper-realistic. And there were two small glowing red dots in those black eyes staring right at me, as if staring into my mind. His grin was wide and demonic, it literally stretched the sides of his face like a treasure cat, except Sonic had fangs, very sharp fangs, much like the werehog's teeth except more vicious looking, somewhat yellowish, and having the looks of it, he had stains of blood and small bits of flesh on his lips and fangs if he ate some animal. I stared at the gruesome image for a good 30 seconds, never taking my eyes off it. I felt if it was actually looking at me, smiling at me, that face, it just took 10 seconds for it to etch itself into my brain for good. Then the screen flickered with red static again, three times, and on the third time I heard the Kefka laugh, except this time it sounded distorted, demonic even. It went to the image again except this time there was the text again, though it was messed up. It was pretty much one of the most horrifying things I looked at since I had this game. I am God! It was when I read that message while looking at Sonic when it hit me, I realized right then and there, this Sonic was a monster, a pure evil, sadistic, all-powerful, nightmarish, demented monster, and all of his victims, including Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and Kyle, are just his little toys. And the game is a very gateway into his chaotic, nightmarish world and the very hell his victims are trapped in. Suddenly, in an actual split second, I screamed as Sonic lunged at the screen, screeching loudly with his mouth open to an unnatural length, revealing nothing but a literally spiraling abyss of pure darkness before the red static came again, this time much louder and distorted, so loud that it hurt my ears. I yelled and grabbed my ears as the red static screeched for a good 7 seconds. Then it stopped and showed nothing but a black screen. As I sat there, staring at the black screen, one last text came up. Ready for round two, Tom? The Kefka laugh, now sounding more clear as if Sonic was right behind me, played again three times as I looked at the text in shock and confusion. Then I got booted back to the main menu and this time the third save file had a TV image of Robotnik in the same tormented state as Tails and Knuckles. Robotnik's skin turned a dull gray, his mustache drooped and had blackened, his glasses broke and blood is coming from them and he had a mere dead expression on his face. I looked at Tails, Knuckles and Robotnik and I cried a bit, I pitied them for the agony they're going through. That they were forever trapped within the game, forever tormented by that horrid hedgehog and always will be. Then the computer shut itself off, I couldn't turn it back on no matter what I did. I sat there for around 25 seconds, horrified by what had just happened. Sonic is the very embodiment of evil, he tortures people who play his game in more ways than one, and when you get bored he drags you into the game, literally drags you into hell where he can play with you always as his toy. I can't imagine the game out of my I can't get the game out of my computer, I think it's stuck there, but at least I managed to turn it on back now. And I sat there for 25 seconds, I heard the voice right behind me, like a whisper. Try and keep this interesting for me, Tom. I turned around to see where the voice came from, and what I saw made me scream. Sitting on my bed, staring at me, was a sonic blushy smiling with blood stains under its eyes. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, the cat's kind of out of the bag, you know, you, you can look at the, the upload dates, see when I uploaded the video, but uh, that, that was the original Sonic.exe written by JC the Hyena, oh my god, <laughs> like I have to catch my breath, and what can you really say about it, this, this is a piece of shit. This is the worst fucking thing I've read in a long time. And it's really baffling that anybody read this and thought, yeah, this is good. 
this this is a great story. What an excellent piece of literature. It, it, like it's unbelievable. There has to be something wrong with like the water that Sonic fans drink to think this is like remotely acceptable for a piece of fiction. It, it's unbelievable. Like, you just straight up got to be stupid or like a child. You know, like a child would probably find this scary or an idiot, which you know those things too often very common things for the Sonic community, but what, what can I even say? It's Sonic. It's written like ass because this fucking idiot, Tom, just crying. Like, you tail, Tails got turned into a fucking spooky entity. And the fucking twist is that there's a Sonic plushie with like a bloody Sonic plushie just materializes into reality. Now, I know, JC has written multiple stories in the Sonic.exe canon, all of which I've read before. I've read Round 2, which is somehow even worse. I've read the remake that you could only get on his Fur Affinity, which is somehow even worse. A lot of people don't know that there was an official Sonic.exe remake, but a lot of people don't know that because around the time that came out was the time JC the Hyena kind of got expelled from every community possible because uh, he might be like a, was like a groomer or something. I don't know, I didn't look into that, I don't usually care to look into YouTube drama, it's not my thing. But I will say, it's been brought to my attention, he may or may not have plagiarized the story. There's like a Spanish story out there that's like very similar to Sonic.exe that came out first. So uh, I'm gonna look into that because it's a really interesting story and I will take any instance to dunk on not only Sonic.exe and JC the Hyena because I hate the story and I hate him, but also Every everything about everything that was inspired by Sonic.exe kind of sucks. Like this is a bunch of very iconic fan games that have a lot of effort put into it that are marginally scarier and like more well made than the story. But it's fucking spooky Sonic. Like it's all stupid. I've, there's so many different versions of Sonic.exe made by fucking idiots that has like different lore and it's all stupid. Everything inspired by the story sucks and I don't like it and I will never cover it. I will, I will cover it to laugh at it. Actually, that's wrong. I will laugh at it. I will probably do the same thing of reading it as a joke and putting, like, fake fire alarm noises and see who notices in the comment section. But... if Did you like the very comedic reading? I, I don't really want to do the pseudo-chills voice. I didn't really feel like committing it to it in the first place. But I, I do kind of want to start, like, a crappy pasta reading of just reading horrible stories and not taking it seriously whatsoever that that seems like a bit of fun so if you want some of that let me know but i hope you enjoyed this uh april fools video you know april fools you thought this was a real story just kidding it's one of the worst creepypastas ever made written by an absolute piece of shit